Have you ever had a job that requires you to shave your beard in order to stay employed? Today, we're going to talk about an entire country full of men who protested a clean shaven work policy that almost became a law, but they changed history as we know it. Freedom, because we know what freedom feels like, and this is not it. Hey guys, my name is Derek. I'm the owner of Beach Bum Beards. But to fully understand the importance of this labor strike that started in Paris, France, we have to uncover the meaning of what the mustache was to the French men. The mustache itself has been a representation of one's military experience throughout history. And even more so for the French men who, during the Napoleon era, admired the Hungarian Hussar so much that they began to implement the same facial hairstyles in their society. What once was a predominant clean-shaven society, mainly due to King Louis XIV, was no longer the accepted trend of this time. You see, by the 19th century, the mustache was so popular that the French military began to require all men to have mustaches, except for maybe the lower ranks. And that requirement was to reinforce the hierarchy. In fact, the mustache requirement was so strong that men who couldn't grow a mustache had to find new ways to ensure they had a mustache. In fact, the French military was so strict about the mustaches that men who could not grow one had to find new ways to do so. If you could not grow a mustache, you may have used these types of techniques such as painting, which was common for drawing on thick, full mustaches. And in some cases, they would even use human hair and glue to try to make it look more natural with curls. And in some reports, horse hair and glue were used to give that thick, full mustache. That's a fake mustache. Oh, really? The military mustache had become so popular by this time that the middle class and the upper class began to wear them all the time. And and that was their way of accepting the new stylish trend. And if you'll smash that like button, your beard will grow through. Smash it, boy! Smash it! The upper class's influence on society was so strong that industries were created based off of their needs. And fine dining is as French as, well, the mustache. Before restaurants were created in France back in the 1700s, people traveled to taverns and pubs and they would order pre-made meals during specific times throughout the day. And see the restaurant allowed patrons to come visit while the restaurant was open and they could also purchase a pre-made meal, but they could also order from the menu, which was a la carte. As the 19th century rolls around, restaurants had been such a rave and Now servants and butlers from upscale homes began to open up establishments that had more of an upscale feel. And with fine linens covering tabletops and well-dressed and groomed waiters and gourmet food only seen in wealthy aristocrat homes. As fine dining began to expand as an industry, more and more waiters were needed. However, in order to provide that same experience to the Patreons, that they were paying for, these waiters had to shave their mustaches so that they would be looked upon as lesser people to the consumers eating at the restaurants. Therefore, French veterans, hardworking tradesmen, and even lower class Frenchmen were required to shave their mustaches in order to provide a wage for their families. Now you have to remember that the mustache was a symbol of manliness. It was a badge of time served in the military and even a feeling of freedom. So to ask a French man to shave his mustache would be equivalent to asking a modern man to have a vasectomy. Furiated that Parliament was planning to ban mustaches. Never underestimate a man with a mustache. Fast forward to 1907. The fine dining waiters have now hit the streets of Paris to begin a labor strike demanding that they get better pay, more time off, and of course, the freedom to wear a mustache. This strike was so effective that these waiters would go into other establishments and have employees join them during this cause. And on multiple days, the Paris Police Department was dispatched to disband this angry mob of waiters. It's unknown exactly how many people participated in the strike, 
but it's reported between hundreds and thousands of men and women marched the streets of Paris protesting against this new ban on mustaches. In fact, the newspaper La Lantern even reported fed up waiters march out on the establishments, costing restaurants up to 25,000 francs per day in revenue. See, at this point in the strike, the press has started taking sides. And pardon my French if I mispronounce any of these. Ligue Wula, the newspaper wrote, just imagine in 10 years these same people demanding to wear mustaches will be demanding to have clean-shaven faces like the upper class. The Sheblus wrote, these same people would easily be able to hide their profession in after hours. They also went on to use the same argument that if waiters are demanding higher wages, then the price of beer and wine would go up, which would result in the upper class going on strike for simply having to pay these higher prices. Some of these newspapers did actually have valid points. For instance, Le Journal came at it from more of a health perspective stating that the germs from the mustache would easily cover the beverages and quickly travel to our stomachs, causing great illness. Then going on to question whether or not the waiters would be likely to groom and clean their mustaches daily. Newspapers that did defend the protesters, like Le Veneer, wrote that they congratulated these men and that they found that this protest was fair and natural of cause. La Presse stated, that these men should be allowed to wear their mustaches as a sign of freedom and that these men are no longer under the rule of a king. And of course, the New York Times would mock in their press release, stating that these misguided noblemen and pre middle-class folks cling to a belief that their servants, whom treated like slaves, shall not have the right to wear a mustache. Such practice as this under a democratic republic is humiliating and disgusting. By mid-May, the conflict had come to an end, and waiters were returning back to work with thick, full mustaches. And although they had won the war on mustaches, they didn't have their other demands met, such as better pay or more time off. Now, some of these critics would suggest that the French waiters had been tricked into selling for way less than what they deserved. But others would say... It wasn't so much about the labor and justice, but more so about the freedom of self-identity, fashion, and manliness. You can't help but to stop and think, how long would these men have protested for the freedom to wear a mustache? And why are all these other countries taking so long to adapt to this equality of facial hair? It wasn't until California, the first state in America in 2019, that implemented the Crown Act. Because our history has shown that innocent men have been arrested and placed in jail for simply wearing a beard. Check out the story of Joseph Palmer. And until next time, always be you.